Greetings, everyone. Greetings, greetings. Welcome, welcome, welcome guys. <laughs> you remember us? Welcome to another session of Midday Master Midday Master Mindsets. Yes. yes. With me, Sister Yaya, and my handsome and most intelligent and emotionally strong brother, Andrew Pierre. Welcome back. Thank you. Andrew. Thank you for the compliments. I love compliments during the day. Appreciate it. Thank you. Love it. Yes. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now, let's get into it, shall we? Why, why wait even longer? Let's get into it. So what are we talking yeah. about? Yes. Well, once again, welcome, guys, to the third installment of the Midday Mastermind Mindsets. And in today's video... We're actually going to talk about how you can use your imagination mm. to create what you want. Wow. So now we're actually progressing this series where now we're taking action steps. So our first couple installments was mostly about getting you into the groove of changing your mindset and getting into the groove of getting out of that negative mindset. Now it's all about action. And I love mm. action. And guess what? We're actually in um, Aries season. If you know anything about Aries, because I'm one, we're all about action. So now it's about <laughs> the energy of taking action. So this is right on course. So stay tuned. Yes, yes, it is Aries season. My moon is in Aries. So that action. Mine is too. <laughs> oh, wow. You're a double yeah. Aries? I'm a double Aries and I'm a Leo rising. So yeah. it's fire oh, all yes, across the board. <laughs> it's like firing all pistons. <laughs> But yes, yes. <laughs> so shout out to all the Aries out there. Shout out to all the fire sounds out there. But yes. this video, of course, is for everyone. So thank you yes. for watching. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, let's get into it. You talked about imagination yeah. and action steps, things that we can do. And everyone always wants to know, okay, what can I do to move from A point A to point B? So what you got for us? Sure. So um, when it comes to that, you want to start creating the storyline you want for your life. You know, mm -hmm. what does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it taste like? You know, you need to start walking in that storyline that you create in your mind. For example, when I wanted to move into a new place in mm -hmm. a new state, I imagined what my neighbors look like. I imagined wow. me walking down the street with my dog. What does the restaurant near me smell like? What are they cooking? You know, what does the air smell like in spring? What does the texture of the snow look like in the um, winter? What does, you know, the birds chirp when they actually just reap or, you know, they birth their offspring? So you yeah. want to really start envisioning detail by detail of you in that place. So if you're, of course, as you know, the easiest thing to manifest and what everyone want to manifest is what? Money. You know, there you go. Yes. So if you want more money, imagine you counting those hundreds. Yes. Imagine you doing things without even looking at your checking or banking account because you have it in your account. Yes. Imagine you spending within reason, but not really, it's not a it's not hindering your lifestyle. Yes. So whatever you want to have, create that storyline. And guess what? Of course, that's gonna take steps to putting it out in the universe. Cause guess what? You're creating that storyline, so that storyline could actually become real. Yes, I love it. I love it. I really love it. And that's helped me tremendously, um, even in the process of looking for a new home. Um, one of my requirements is a home, and my envision is a home that people who lived in there really loved each other, right? Yeah. Because I want the walls, I want the wood, I want everything, the screws and the walls to be filled with love, right? Yeah. So maybe that's the reason why it's taken such a while. But I imagined it. I imagined what it would smell like. I imagined what it would feel like in the, in the rising, in the midday. And the I imagined all these things. And I know it's going to happen. Um, yeah. So that imagination piece is key. One thing I like to say about money is when a lot of us, um, you know, may not be used to a lot of money or they're coming in or their first generation, they may be coming into their own and want to make more money and maybe raise their social economic status. One of the things I notice is when I don't think about money is as in not having enough. So if I'm going out and I see something I really want and it's in reason, like you said, I just go and get it. Like, and then the money for whatever I need just appears. You know, Definitely. without yeah. worry or anything like that. So that imagination and that action is so important. Absolutely. You know, and just to add to it, you need to understand that this is your vision. This is, once again, your storyline. So it could be whatever. It's not ridiculous. It's not out of touch. It's mm -hmm. not out of reason because you're creating that storyline. So right. don't limit your imagination because that's what they teach us. You know, when you're a child, yeah. as you grow up, you know, you can't do this. You can't do that. And now the child is either fearful for certain things or they stop imagining certain things. Yes. So now you want to reprogram yourself to be free within your imagination. And whatever yeah. that storyline is, let it be what that storyline is. Right. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank and you. one thing. 
And one thing I love about children, and I don't know because I have a small one, is that they're very imaginative. Yeah. And they demand sort of what they want without shame and guilt. If they're hungry, they're going to like, look, I'm hungry. Somebody feed me. Or if they want attention, they don't have no problems vocalizing and imagining what they need and um, and getting it and making that th those demands known energetically, you know? Yes. And so sometimes I tell people, we kind of got to be like kids in some ways. Put away the shame, the guilt, and just say what you want. Imagine again, dream again, and watch it happen. Exactly. It will happen. And that leads me to our second point, which is you want to start surrounding yourself with people that think or feel the same. Now, of course, not everyone's storyline, not everyone's vision is going to be exact T to T, but you want to be in that similar vibrations of mindsets that are imaginative. Want to understand that there's more to life than either each just working a nine to five and dying. There's so right. much more. Do you want to travel? Do you want to open your own business? Do you want to spend more time with your kids? Like, you want to start surrounding with people that are not just in the rat race, but yes. understand that there's more to life, whatever that is. And yes. understand that everything is temporary, whatever that situation is. Right. So that collectiveness is going to help propel that storyline to be printed. And now it's a New York Times bestseller. <laughs> metaphorically speaking, if you get my drift. So, oh, totally. <laughs> yeah, so definitely want to create that storyline, manifest it, get it published into your real life. That's awesome. Get it published into your real life. Write yeah. your storyline, get it published, bring it into manifestation, bring it into reality in your own life. In That's your beautiful. own life. And mm -hmm. it's going to be a New York Times bestseller. That's you right. Created it. That's right. Yeah. And maybe be a Pulitzer Prize, Pulitzer Prize winner as well. So it, mm -hmm. it, it, all over the world, people, you, yes. you can, you don't have to limit. And I want to say this because in the time that we live in now, there's a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear about taking steps and moving forward and having dreams again. Uh, sort of last year kind of shattered a lot of things for people in terms of direction they were going. <clears throat> but to me, I see it as an opportunity to rebirth yourself, to say, hey, clean slate, forget everything. Let's imagine again. Let's try again. Now, now that we see the world a little differently, Let's reorganize ourselves and um, dream again. Let's write yeah. our books with a different script based upon the new information that we have about the new world, the ascension, everything like that. So this is really a good time that we're talking about this because it's kind of like a springboard. Um, yeah. with the energetic energy that's here to help us with the planets and, of course, the universe and the ancestors and our spirit team that's here to help us. But also our, our minds, our physical minds are being open to new ideas, to new concepts because you made your transition this year to where you're living now and i know that was a huge thing for you but it started 2019 even before that even before that yeah i was gonna say even before that it's yeah. and thank you for bringing that up because during that journey all the tips that i'm mentioning it's been experience i had to surround myself with people such as yourself that are like-minded i had to make sure that i was not limiting my vision to just yeah. what it is and of course moving on to the next steps so understand that it may take time or it may happen overnight, but either way, you need to be grateful for the process. And we did touch yes. upon other videos, the previous videos about being grateful and expressing mm -hmm. your gratitude along the way. So absolutely, yes, the transition has been for years coming, yes. but ultimately it was the right time. Okay. So Perfect. Perfect. So getting right into our next um, tip in regards to using your, um, your imagination to create the lifestyle and the storyline that you want is... In regards to, yes, you want to surround yourself with people that are like-minded, but now you also want to protect from people that are not. So I now you need to start moving away and taking your energy away from people or things that no longer serve in mm -hmm. the storyline that you want to publish. So right. if you know that people are just non-believers in what you have to do, or if you know that people have self-doubt, or you get the energy that they've not supported, or you get the energy that they're jealous. And I know you actually created segments about jealousy, whether yeah. it's through parents or whether through other ones, but understand that that energy is going to play into your mindset. And now guess what? Your storyline may be tainted, or it actually may not be your storyline. It may be someone else's that ah. they're creating unsubconsciously because you're allowing that energy. Mm -hmm. For example, let's just say I want to start a food truck and mm -hmm. I'm telling all my friends, yes, I'm going to start this Caribbean food truck. You know, we're going to have sea moss smoothies. We're going to have um, jerk chicken wing, lollipops. Like it's going to be very innovative. It's going to be mm -hmm. a twist on Caribbean foods. We're going to have griot. I'm Haitian. So we're going to have some fried griot. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have like all these beautiful food. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling all my friends and family, because guess what? 
I'm a child in it. I'm excited. I'm mm -hmm. bright eyed about the idea. And then you have some people that are, you know what? Based on New York regulations, you can't have a food truck. You know, based on, you know, right. um, the statistics, you can't have a food truck. Based on the competition, because, oh, I could just go to a jerk chicken spot down the street. Why would I go to your food truck? And now I'm like, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't have a food truck. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should just cook out of my kitchen. Right. Now I'm starting to rewrite my storyline based mm. on someone else's um, wow. thought, That's based on someone it. else's limits on That's what happening. my storyline initially was. Yes. So understand, you need to protect your vision, which is yes. AKA your storyline from yes. all the naysayers. And honestly, yes. I'm very big on not sharing if I feel any of that. If yes. I feel that, I'm not sharing. You're not going to hear a peep from me. You're right. just going to see it when it comes out. That's and if right. you ever double back, I don't forget. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> oh, you was the same person. You know what I'm saying? I still will walk high. I mean, I'm still I'm still, wor I'm still working. Yeah. But that's just one of my traits. Like, I won't forget if I feel like someone in my past has hindered me from where I'm at. That energy will never Ooh. forget. I guess that's the Aries of me. That's an Aries tree, yes. It. It's a beautiful I will one. always, listen, I'm an elevated. I'm still elevated. I'm enlightened. Thank you. But trust and believe that fire will always come back to those I feel like has either wronged me or whatever. But that's all another story. Yes. But yeah, understand that you need to protect your storyline. Yes. yes. So what you got, this? So what, I, what comes to my mind is a couple of things. Um, Andrew's mentioned just one of the most important things when you're manifesting is the environment. Uh, what we know, because I have a, I have a, public health background, science background, and we know that environment shapes every, shapes is a huge factor in how things grow, how things mature. If you look at the body, the pH of the body, the environment of the body determines health or wealth. Um, where you live, what you have access to is all in your environment. Um, how far you can go or how, not how far you can go is all in your environment. So, you know, I have a background in studying these things, but what Andrew is saying is for your dreams and for your, your purpose to come to fruition, the environment is essential, right? I'm a newer mom. So my household environment is essential to my well-being and that of my child and everyone who lives in this house. So the environment is important. Um, Andrew's, Andrew's funny because his, his fire is very transformational, right? Aries is fire, fire. Okay. He's very transformational and fire is also very transformational. And so in protecting your dreams, sometimes you may have to transform yourself in order to protect your vision, in order to protect, um, where you're going. And some people can't go with you. Some people may not be able to travel that same road that you're going on because at one point when you were vibrating here, people are like, oh yeah, we can hang out because you know, you're kind of in the same range. But once you start to get serious about your life, serious about where you're going, you have to change some of your ways and it may require for you to elevate, but your friends and your family may still be here, right? So what do you do? Do you allow their comments and their thoughts to bring you down here again? Or do you stay up here? Right. And then doing that is a is a hedge of protection for yourself so you can manifest. I tell people all the time, don't worry about not having this, that, the third. Don't worry about who's supporting, who's not supporting. The universe and your ancestors got your back. Right. So nothing to worry about. Those who vibrate out your tribe, maybe for a reason. Those and just also know that there's others who are going to come into your tribe to assist you and to support you. So if there's a fear of not having support, or I don't know. It's OK. If it's inside of your heart and your soul, just move forward with it. And the universe is responsible. As you respond to you, the universe will also respond to you and give you everything that you need and more. So don't worry. And Andrew's right. Environment is very important. Yes. And on that note, we're going to move into the next um, tip when it comes to actually using your imagination to shape the storyline you want for your life. Mm -hmm. And this is actually one of my favorite ones. And it's actually have fun because oftentimes yeah. this seems so heavy, seems so serious. Oh my God. Not me personally, but someone may say, Oh my God, I'm B R O K E. You know, I don't, as it go yeah. back to go back to the other words, we don't pronounce certain words. Right. Oh my God, I'm P O O R. Oh my God, I don't have no M O N E Y. Mm -hmm. I think that is funny. I don't have mm -hmm. no whatever. I will never say that, but if you're in that mindset, you see probably are just SAD or you're not happy. You know what I'm saying? But have fun. Understand that it's all temporary. So my biggest tip to you guys is use your inner child 
to shape your outer adult. Yes. So use the inner child of imagination, of happiness, of fun to shape the hardened adult that you are. Yes. So it's a way of working inward, outward. Yes. Inward, outward. Yes. I'm a grown man. I'm an adult, but I'm using the child that's within me yes. to shape the storyline that I want. So have fun, relax, understand yes. that it, it's, it's, it's a process. Yes, yes, you may not be quote unquote happy. Yes, you may not feel well or whatever the case may be. But honestly, if you fall in our steps and you get into CMOS and you, you should be fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, but right. for those that are just getting started in their enlightened journey, they may not understand these things. Like they're just right. accustomed to being programmed to feeling bad about themselves or feeling mm -hmm. a certain way. But I challenge you to just have fun no matter where you're at and things will change like that. Honestly, that's yes. uh, that's one thing I could actually say. Things do change like that as soon as you make that shift. So yes. if I know I'm having a bad day, but I would say I'm successful now, I'm healthy now, I'm worthy now, I have a good day now, it shifts. Yes, that's so, so powerful. So have fun. And once again, use your inner child to shape your outer yes. adults. Yes. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't have said it better. And inner child work, and this is beyond the scope of this conversation, fam. I just want to yeah. drop this in here. It was way beyond the scope of what we're talking about. Is Inner child work is probably the most important work you can do because it brings you back to that child. That child is not worrying about things. It allows you to be free to create, to imagine, to be open. Children live from their heart. Actually, yesterday I went to the park <clears throat> and I walked around, did a little exercise, but the majority of my time was spending watching children play. And how they interact with each other, how you, they fall and get back up, how one is very passionate, how they're compassionate towards each other, how they don't see um, how much money they got in their bank account. They're not seeing um, colorism. They're not seeing, they're just having fun. And those kids were just jumping up and down. Um, and they were in the full essence in myself of their God self. They're not having a loud, they're not weighed down with the things of this world just yet. But even as adults, we can go back. And we should go back and harness that energy because we're all still meant to be children. This seriousness that we're in is not really a natural state. This is why there's so much tension and stress. Yeah. And so um, if we can, like Andrew mentioned, get childlike again, play, have fun. Don't take yourself or other people too seriously. Um, and then, and we, you know, there's a lot of health markers when people are overly stressed, or overly serious. You can see the effects on their body. Hey, let it go. Give yourself a chance. Um, I do teach a course on mother wounds, which deals with childhood wounds as well. Jump into something like that to help to open you up, to free you up a little bit. Because it is true that some people are not really comfortable or haven't been in that space for a long time, which is why probably life is kind of difficult, right? So what yeah. Andrew was mentioning, hey, let's take a minute. Let's look at this thing. Just take a step back. Go to a point in time in your childhood when you had, if you can mentally, were just free. And how, how did you feel? Well, how was the sun? Remember we talked about imagination, right? Um, what was the smell? What were your favorite foods? Get back to those things. Get back to the joy of living again. And then manifestation is not even a thought because it just comes effortlessly because you've created the environment for it to happen. Yes, exactly. And speaking of loosening up, ironically, I actually had my first chiropractor appointment last week. And I'm not experiencing any major pain at all, but I was just watching some videos and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like the cracking, the sounds, I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. So I went in to get my first alignment last week and it was black owned. Love her. She was amazing. Of course, I'll be leaving a review soon. And um, I was just going through the paperwork and the verbiage on this was insane. Yeah. How much pain are you in? When did you have this pain? Um, how frequent it was just so everything was pain related and mm. I could get the sense that on a scale from one to ten, how big is your pain? And it was like I was getting the idea of who her ideal client was. Oh that they're always in pain, mm. that they're not flexible, they're only going there because things are hurting. Right. And I really didn't want to answer the questions, but I had to. And right. I kind of felt like, wow. And I'm her ideal client because I'm not in pain. Like, I just wanted right. to, you know, and I feel like it's good to get alignment. So I went there and we were just doing basic stretches and I was able to do it. And I was excited because I normally do these exercises anyway. I was able to touch my toes. And she was like, a lot of people are not even able to touch their toes because of the wow. stiffness and the pain that they're in. Wow. So I say all that to say this. 
loosen up, you know, find ways to loosen up, you know, just because at the gym, I do fun things. Cause like I said, I'm tuning into my inner child. It yeah. doesn't matter how old you are, find ways to loosen up physically. And in this case, of course, mentally. So yeah. I just want to add a little piece in there that yes. loosen up while you're having fun. Yes, yes. And I'm so glad we're talking about this. And I don't, I, my, my goal is not to belabor this, but it's really, really important that we have fun. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people say time flies when you're having fun because you're not thinking about time. You're not thinking about the heaviness. Oh, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. You're just thinking, okay, I'm having fun. So like your life is moving smoothly. Um, a lot of people whose soul feels tired on the inside, like they've been through because the life has been, um, somewhat of a challenge, but they've um, held on to a lot. They haven't learned to loosen up to relax. Um, yeah. so it's very, very, very important. I can't stress enough how much, um, it's important for us to have fun to just relax and, and you know in manifesting i tell people just, just relax once you say yeah. just just be easy just that be way easy. the universe could go do what it gotta do and your energy is free to do what you gotta do and life isn't so stressful perfect so now let's move into our final tip of the day for this third installment this is our third installment yes. wow it's not really flown so yes. thank you guys thank, thank you. you thank you but yeah for our third installment for using your imagination to create the storyline that you want, it's actually also extremely important as well and it ties everything together. And that is, of course, you wanna make sure you're not operating in a place of any self-doubt. Mm -hmm. When it comes to your imagination, they sniff the bullshit. The universe sniffed the bullshit. If you don't believe it, the universe, God within you is not gonna believe it. So if you're creating mm -hmm. a fairy tale and not a storyline, because there's a difference. If wow. you're creating a fairy tale and not a storyline, it's not gonna come for you. A fairy tale comes from a place of make believe. Yes, it's cute, it's bubblegum, it's raindrops, mm -hmm. but that's not the same thing as a storyline. Mm -hmm. A storyline is coming from a place of where you wanna be. It's telling who you really are, it's telling where you really wanna go. Mm -hmm. Although both of them are in your imagination. A fairy tale is coming from a place of make believe. Mm. A storyline is coming from a place of reality that has yet to be made real. Mm. So wow. you can't operate in a place of self doubt because that's going to then shift your storyline, which would then turn into a place of fairy tale, yes. which then <laughs> turns into a place of it's not going to happen, AKA. So understand. There's no self-doubt. And certain exercises that I have for myself is going back to our old videos is I am worthy. I am worthy of this storyline. I am worthy of having money. I am worthy yes. of moving to a place that I really want to be. So yes. start understanding that it's your imagination and yes. you cannot bullshit your imagination. Okay. Yes. So no self-doubt is actually required. No self-doubt is allowed when it comes to shifting your storyline. Cause you want that New York times bestseller. You want that global hit. And that's yes. going to only come from a place of you writing a storyline that is true and authentic to yourself. And when I mean by writing, I mean, it's writing in here. Mm -hmm. You're creating it in here. You're mm -hmm. imagining it in here. Mm -hmm. You're manifesting it in here. Mm -hmm. So once again, I'll say this and I'll be crystal clear. You want to be in the habit of creating a storyline, not writing a fairy tale. Yes. Yes. Wow. That's 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 powerful. I, I um I love I love the way you put storyline versus fairy tale. It makes me think about uh, fairy tale is just maybe tapping into things that people think we should do, um, things that are not really of our true self, like you met you mentioned. Um so but to write your storyline takes a little bit of effort. And effort, I mean, not work, but effort in terms of really being honest. Like, what yeah. do you really, really want? Not what you think yes. you can get, but what do you really, really want? What do you, what do you, what, you how want? do you envision your life? What brings you the greatest joy, happiness? Uh, what puts you in that space that you, um, you feel childlike again, where you can have fun? That's a great place to start when writing your storyline, because that, that fun and that good, bubbly, no limits thing is where children are, is where the inner child is, is where you really want to be. And so I'm so glad you say that because a lot of us, including myself at one point, wrote a fairy tale. I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to do this and do it this way. And it was great. It was just a fairy tale. But once I started to learn more about myself by sitting in an environment, getting quiet, having more fun, 
relaxing into life more. I start to see the storyline develop. And that's when my life started to get easier. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, for us, we're living it. Yes. Our tribe is living it and doing it. And we're just super grateful that we're just here to just enlighten people. You know, if this reaches 1 million, which it will, if it yes. reaches 2 million, which is will, which will, everyone is going to pass on that love and light. So yes. we just appreciate the fact that everyone needs to go back to their inner child. And yes, if you want to take it seriously, we know that things can happen like childhood trauma, things of that nature. Right. But even think outside of that, even if it's so hard, but really think outside of that. And think about what it really feels like to be a child, which is carefree, mm -hmm. you know, risk taking, mm -hmm. you know, understanding that there's really no limit, right. um, creating bigger visions. Children yeah. are not limited to money. I mean, you have kids. Think about this way. Like you think if they walk to a store, they, oh, well, this candy is $3. No, they're not thinking about the candy that's $3. They just want it. Right. So why are we putting <laughs> limits on our imagination? Right. So that's all I'm going to say in closing is that. We do appreciate it. Find your inner child. Mm -hmm. Once again, the steps is create the storyline that you want. Surround yourself with people that have similar storylines or see the power and impact in your storyline. Uh -huh. Protect your storyline from those that don't. Have fun. And finally, no self-doubt. Beautiful. No self-doubt. That's beautiful. It's, it's wonderful. And family, if you don't know, y'all can reach Andrew and get more of his wisdom by booking a session with him at bookthepowerofyou at gmail.com and also find him on YouTube, Power of You, excuse me, Power of You with Andrew. That's on YouTube. And his email is bookthepowerofyou at gmail.com. And I meant to mention it earlier, but it's been on the screen. Reach out to him. He's a, as you can see, oh, thank you. we both are a wealth of information, of resources to help you to get along your way. One thing I can say is that you can do this journey alone. And as strong and as wonderful as I know that you are, again, we don't live by ourselves. We live in a community. We are children. We like to play. We interact. So yeah. reach out to Andrew. Um, he has consultations and a variety of other tools to help to get you along your way. Um, and he's a wonderful, wonderful soul. And so Thank I wanted you. to make Thank sure I, I gave you a shout out, make sure people know that he's available for support if, you, um, if you're needing it. Just reach out to him. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, thank you, guys. Um, thank you, sis. As always, it's always been a pleasure. And until next time. Until and next yeah, time, we'll see family. you in our next couple installments. Um, as yes. you can see, every video installment moving forward is more action related steps. We built the foundation. Mm -hmm. Now we're actually, well, we saw the foundation. Now we're building the foundation with actual materials. So we're going to get there, guys. So thank you for your patience and thank you for guys for taking in the materials. We've been getting such great feedback. And once yes. again, thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, I'll thank you. Bye-bye. Talk to you soon. Talk to you. Bye-bye. Peace.